welcome to Louisiana Heartbeats. I'm Sudi Landry, and once more, Neil Bertrand has taken time to come on the set, and we're going to be talking about letting you be uh, brought up to date on the Author Expo that we had talked about the last time we were together. So welcome to the show, Neil. Thank you, Sudi. March, around March 5th this year, you and I decided to team up and to try and find something that we could uh, showcase authors. Right. And we agreed that with your expertise of being actually a publisher and an author yourself, and I, just the gift of gab and connections with ALC, decided that we were going to venture out and try to help others get the exposure they needed to, in order to get their books published. So it turns out that you and I have the, the same heart and one accord. So, Neil, what I want to do is remind Acadiana that it started out with an idea that a location outside of, say, a church, a neutral location needed to be found. But then again, who has all the finances these days to really go and rent buildings and all this? But only God, who is the center of this vision of ours, intervened on our part. And the Thinstead Center out of Grand Coteau, Louisiana, we discussed March 5th, offered their building, which is a community outreach center, for us to showcase an author. We decided we were going to try and just fill the water, so to test the water, so to speak. So Neil and I decided to go ahead and do an event, and we showcased Neil, who had many, many books that you've helped other people publish, plus your own. And being my now publisher of my books, we tested the waters. Okay, so then we realized real fast that maybe we just didn't have, an, by showcasing one or two, might not be the route to go. So then just recently, we decided why not try many authors. So we came up with the idea, Katiana. This place has 14 tables and chairs. Most of the time, an author has to bring their own tables. They have to bring the chairs. 99% of the time, we're outside under the sun, and if it rains, you're in trouble, and if it's hot and you didn't bring a tent, you were still in trouble. And get sunburned. And you get sunburned like he did, and you even end up on a corner flagging down people to try to buy your work, and that's exactly what he did in New Iberia. So authors are really serious people, and this is one sitting here. He knows because he makes a living publishing books. So I wanted to add the humor in this, but serious business is that we have... 14 tables right. and chairs to match that has been offered for us. And all we had to do was line up 14 authors right. to come in and I might add three. Well, guess what, authors? We only started talking about this two weeks ago, and we are now totally booked. 14 authors in our event. June 3rd is now June booked. Fourth. June 4th. I keep saying third. June 4th is now booked, but then we have another event coming up July 9th and even into August. So, and these are on a Saturday? Always on a Saturday. Uh, usually the first Saturday of every month, unless we let you know on Facebook right. or YouTube that things have changed. But at this time, rain or shine, it's inside always. In a nice air-conditioned building. And because it is an outreach center, then we also decided these people have opened their arms and their space and their buildings that why not help them raise funds right. and have donations brought in for the courtesy and out of respect that they are allowing us to have this building. And now we've been informed they're going to try to help us with media coverage. And, of course, AOC is going to help us out, too. And you told me that they normally charge a lot of money <laughs> to rent that big room. That's what I was told. But then I did just uh, check with uh, Julia, and she said she doesn't know where it came from, but okay. it's not true. But she said, yeah, in the past somebody wanted to pay an X amount of money, but they were just not for that idea. So because they are for us, why, Neil? Because we're also going to be there helping them get what they need, which is traffic to this town of Grand Coteau, Louisiana. Right. And also the donations coming in. But we're not charging no. our authors. Totally free. So I'm going to let you kind of do a little bit of talking and just say exactly what all of some of the wonderful things has happened since March 5th. What has changed? as far as the event itself? Well, we wanted to pack the room. And we figured that if we could get 14 authors to come and those 14 
it would be ideal if those 14 authors each had a following on Facebook, social media, that they could invite to the event. And let's say we had 100 people visiting in that day, in that room, looking at the books on the 14 tables. That would be, that would be more eyeballs looking at some unknown, supposedly unknown author's books. Right. Now, it's hard work being an author because you're taking what you have in your head putting it down on paper, and that is your life, or a portion of your life that you have captured on paper. Now, that's hard enough, but if you're gonna try to get people to an event by emailing them or social media or what have you, uh, and again, social media, it's kind of like a bookstore where you walk into a bookstore and you're selling a book in a bookstore. You're looking at a million books in a bookstore. Well, your book is camouflaged. Look, it's kind of the same way with social media. Everybody's getting bombarded with Facebook posts and Twitters and, and all that, and email and so on and so forth. So if we can get these authors who have poured their heart and soul into their work if we can get people to come and visit uh, and see their books on the tables in that room, uh, even if uh, they have bought their friend's book, they have not seen these other books That's that right. are there in the room. So we are trying to help uh, authors to get their books noticed, get some publicity, and get their books bought by these uh, new people coming in. You know, Neil, as far as I know, no one else is doing what we're trying to do. And, but not many people want to give away their services to help somebody else. A lot of people want to just feature themselves. But because of the type of uh, atmosphere that we are connected with, we are anything that's God-inspired. And so if it's placed in our hearts, we're going to do it no matter what anybody says. And that's how it's been happening with me since 1975. My heart is whatever God opens the door for me, I want him. Open doors. That's the key. That's the key. And I want to open doors, be used to be part of the opening opportunities for other people. That's, that has been my prayer recently, open doors of opportunity. Uh, something comes to me and I say, okay, Lord, is this of you? And so I will go ahead and step in. And it may work for a while, and then that season is shut. Then pray for another open door. That's right. Okay? So uh, we have at this event, we have people coming that some people have several books that they have done. That's right. Others have written just one. And so we have the unknown, what I call the unknown authors, uh, and some that have a following. Uh, so we're going to put them all in one pot and let everybody come and visit and see what they have. So we're inviting, calling all authors. If you are an author, please contact us, email us, email Sudi, and let us know that you are an author and you are interested in coming to these events. We can book you for the uh, future, like Ju July and August and further on into the fall. So we need to know who you are, where you are, and uh, so that we can get you, uh, get some visibility for you and your books. If you do not email me, you do not get put on the list because I'm making a list and checking it twice and more than that in order to know who's coming. Um, Neil, I just happened to have a list of uh, 14 authors that are coming and each of them have a different genre. You, you want to share that with them a little? Glimpse? Sure. Okay. First of all, on the list is Neil Bertrand, who's publisher and author himself of many <coughs> cookbooks. I have three cookbooks that I've written and published and my latest book is a World War II memoir, I guess you could say, a biography of my dad's three years in the South Pacific. And so that's called Dad's War Photos. 
And then Sudi's four books are on her personal experiences, journey of faith uh, from childhood and tells of many uh, miraculous stories and answers to prayer. And Mark Allen is okay. a guy who has survived uh, car accidents, being severely burned over all of his body, and he's come from the wheelchair to start writing not only his true story, Three Times in Me, but also other science fiction stories that he will be sharing with us out there. Then um, Carrie Seymour, she has written two books, uh, and she is a you call her a child advocate? Yes, definitely. And uh, about uh, child abuse and so on. So you have anything else okay. you want to say about her? Carrie has uh, uh, two books, Save Them All and Just Find Me. And actually, it is uh, facts that are intertwined with, with a fictional story. But her personal life as she was growing up, she had an experience of tragedy with a very close friend. So her heart is dear against any child abuse so right. she's also being asked to speak in various areas and there's a big event coming up at the Cajun Dome I understand and she's been asked to maybe speak for one of the major advocates against child abuse okay then we have Connie Grimion will be there uh, Connie has written two books which I've published uh, one is a house for Eliza and the other is never say goodbye and she has written both of these under her pen name, which is her actual maiden name of Constance Moniz. Uh, her father owned Moniz Lumber Company way back mm, major name. in the 40s and 50s. And then we have Greg Fauché. You want to tell him about Greg? Greg Fauché has recently been, uh, uh, he actually he took vice president of the Writers Guild, which was Neil, who backed away so he could do what we're doing now. Right. Uh, and so we are all involved in the Writers Guild. Greg has written a book, Science Fiction, and it's uh, got a twist to it that he has uh, made. Uh, actually, he science fiction and an alien, but it's not your gory alien. It's actually on the spiritual side. So okay. you have to read that book to really know what's going on. And then Susie Perry, uh, she wrote a book on how to cook with black iron pots black pot cooking and also has some uh, genealogy in there I she think. has a genealogy book too uh, so now Deborah LeBlanc now Deborah LeBlanc is uh, an author of several books right That's right many series series so uh, she is uh, I, I would call her a celebrity <laughs> uh, yes. I have never met her okay but uh, you're friends with yes her. and I want to plug it real good Deborah LeBlanc has written many, many uh, stories, and, and, and she's also, and this will give you an idea of what her stories are, all based basically with facts inside of it, but it, it's on the realm of paranormal. She, was a, she is a paranormal investigator. She writes stories kind of like that based on fact, but fiction created. She also uh, has a business uh, in our area, in the Broussard area, but the most important thing I just discovered about Deborah, not only is she an author, but she is part a, of a big, big literary incorporated adventure that she created. The Fright Trail is a yearly haunted house event that happens off of Cameron Street here in Lafayette, Louisiana. That would be in, in, in Scott. In Scott. I'm saying Lafayette. You're right. In Scott, Louisiana. Right on the Scott Road. On the Scott Road. Well. Until I interviewed her a few months ago, I didn't realize that this is not just a, a fundraiser. It is a fundraiser, major fundraiser, that she uses all tickets that are purchased to go through this fright trail, which she has 20 acres, but it's not 20 acres worth of scenery, I don't believe. But she takes all funds that are received from this, or the majority of it, and turns around and purchases uh, reading material to donate when she has plenty to go and do a speaking engagement at the school of her choice and she issues out this. These iPads were the last time that she said and what she does is she does not set up an engagement to speak at any school until she has gathered all of the items and she uses most of the funds from the Sprite Trail. So instead of just being a fun to go to thing, I said, well, you know, Neil, I don't go to stuff like that. But because of the story of taking the money and helping somebody else continue to encourage kids to read, 
I would be interested in uh, myself getting tickets and giving it away so mm -hmm. people would get the credit to help her out in her adventure. So mm -hmm. Deborah is a lady of many, many things. Now Paranormal. the next one is uh, Lauren Bello, a yes. young lady. I think she's 11 years old right now, Neil. And I've been interviewing her actually six years, so that'd be about right, because she was a little bitty thing. Lauren Bello is the youngest author in Louisiana, and she's written, as far as I know, four books. The first one's Meet Lauren, and she goes around to schools, and she speaks to schools, and she's maybe 11 years old. Okay. Interesting. And then our friend Cherie Carlton. Cherie Carlton is uh, also, um, she has a very unique book. I understand it. It is about li trying to live daily with multiple personalities. She has a book called I Am We, and in this book she shares, and some of the personalities, let's see, personalities called alters, has even written a couple of things she said in this book. Originally I read the manuscript and then I read the rest of the book, and it just gives you a glimpse without getting into too much gory detail of the horrible child abuse that she went through and yet when you see her today she's high energized and uh, she's working through it on a daily basis. And can function. And can function and when she uh, is around you you know she's there. <laughs> she just goes all over the place but Cherie is going to share her basically a little glimpse into her life as a multiple personality person. And next on the list is Mr. Leroy Duga. Uh, I've been knowing Mr. Leroy for many, many years, and he was the uh, head of the um, oil center post office for many years. He was the, the top supervisor at that post office. He retired, and one day he was out in his yard or in the field near his house and he disrupted a hornet's nest. Oh goodness. The hornets attacked him and he was stung over 300 times, mm. uh, brought to the hospital and almost died. But he survived and according to what the doctors said, he is the only person in the world that they know of that has survived over 300 hornet attacks at one time. He, uh, when I talked to him on the phone, he had said, and more. This is a me medical mil uh, miracle. But he said, and I just wrote all kinds of stuff, and they're all true, he says. Yeah, so, yeah. So he is, uh, he's quite a how man. How old is he? How he's, he? He is, I, I would say, at least 80. Okay, I, th I remember asking him, because he was just so high energy on the phone, you know, so. He's a tiny man, but packs a lot of power. <laughs> And he's ready to talk and share. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he likes to talk. Uh, and then our friend Linda Mo, who uh, is a, uh, you call her a, she worked for a newspaper, she has written many newspaper stories over the years, and she has written a book. You want to say what that is? Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a, isn't it, I'm not sure if it's her heritage. What is it about? Her town? Broussard, I think. About Broussard? It's about Broussard and the different people in Broussard that made the town famous and she plans on writing about other towns and doing oh, the same thing. Okay. She's also an artist and she's becoming very well known with that also. In fact, I was excited today. Linda didn't think she was going to be able to be part of this and just so happened she ends up calling and she says, look, I, I think I'm going to make time and I want to be a part of this. So that was really exciting. So Linda is going to be with us on June 4th. Okay. Yes. And then the Writers Guild of Acadiana will have a table there. That's right, and the historian is going to be in charge of that table. The Writers Guild of Acadiana is an organization that meets the last Tuesday of every month, and Neil and I are both, of course, you know, involved in that. And so the historian has agreed to come and uh, be a part of this table where she's going to take all the items that we have created, and they will be available for the purchase uh, if people are interested and is. One of the books that Neil uh, did for us, short stories, we had a competition, turned it into an anthology book, which is a collection of many awesome stories from right. people who were not published until this book got published. So, right. and then from there, uh, we have different projects where we had uh, cookbooks, and, and so it's, all, it's interesting. We're going to share with you what people who want to become authors can be involved in, and 
even people who didn't want to be authors became published authors when we did the anthology. So. Right. Okay. Then we have uh, Mr. Mel LeCompte. He will be there, and he has written at least two to three books, huh? He has written, let's see, uh, you know, I can never remember that. Sharpened. Uh, that's the one I could remember. Sharpened iron. Mel LeCompte is an accomplished, actually award-winning journalist. In the past, he's also a teacher, still teaching. And Mel is a cartoonist, and Mel has written two children books that I know of, The Ice Cream Cow, and the terrible Tim, ter Timmy the Terrible Turtle, okay. okay, and he puts his humor in there, but what's so amazing, Neil, is in the back of uh, the Terrible Turtle book, he has brought out some of the pictures and actually places inside of little towns that are famous that we didn't even know about. Okay. So it's an educational tool also. So. And then Sharp and Iron, of course, is uh, about football, so. <clears throat> All right. And then we have, uh, uh, I met a, a friend of mine this past Saturday. We were Facebook friends for many years. Uh, and she, uh, her name is Carola Hartley. And she has written two books. One, well, both of them are on Opelousas. One is Opelousas Tales. One is Opelousas Firsts. And so... Uh, it's kind of up in the air if she'll be able to come to this one, but she will be there eventually. But she's not local. She's actually in Louisiana, but she, further north. She uh, is a local person, an Opelousas native, so to speak, but uh, she was in New Jersey for many years. Then she moved that back down to Louisiana, living in North Louisiana. Well, I just understood that we have maybe now four minutes left in the show, but I want to bring up that we just finished interviewing another author who cannot come to the June 4th event, Terry L. Bethea, and she's created what you call the ARC series, and she has some very interesting children books that have morals and issues and how to overcome different things, and she herself is just retired from teaching many grades in the schools. So she cannot make the June 4th event coming up with the expo, but she does plan on coming in August. So we're already booking in, in uh, July 9th, so if you would be interested in being on the list for July 9th, please, please contact, contact us by email. One of the emails up there that you'll see. Neil will be sure to get me the information or vice versa, I'll keep him updated. Right. And uh, let's tell them where it, this is at. Let's talk about this who it is. At the the location is the Finstead Center in Grand Coteau. And the address, I'll tell you how to get there. If you're coming from I-49, you come into Grand Coteau. At the only stoplight in Grand Coteau, <laughs> you're going to turn left. That's Church Street. You're going to go down about 300 yards. You're going to pass up a red brick church. Then across the driveway from that, next to the church, is a two-story building called the Thinstead Center. This is where they accept donations of uh, lightly used clothing, uh, non-perishable goods, uh, paper products like bathroom tissue, paper towels, toys. Uh, so uh, they are accepting these to give to the poor people or the less fortunate people of Grand Coteau in the Grand Coteau area. So it's what, 268, 268. I think? 268. Church Street. Yes. And it's very easy to find. And believe me, I'm smiling because I get lost real easy, but even if you get lost, you'll find it real fast because you make a big circle. And, uh, but the directions he just gave is, is true. The so only stoplight. If you happen to pass it up and you're going down this hill, <laughs> you know you need to turn around. And if there's, uh, cropland around you, well, you've gone too far, <laughs> backtrack and go back up the hill and you'll see it. Well, let's send out some thank yous to the people involved in helping us make this happen. Julia, Richard, yes, and the board of the Finstead Center. That's we right. want to thank you very much for this opportunity and we're excited that they're getting excited and increasing their media help. Okay, and all authors who register and the kitchen staff that offers to do bag lunches and of course, all the donations that, that people will bring out of appreciation right. for us having this place free and also we're not charging you anything. And to all the media and anyone else who can help us share this on Facebook, you know, we really would be grateful for that also. 
But right now, we're going to go ahead and end the show. And so I want you to know that we are on the air every Tuesday night. Excuse me, they changed our time. Every Monday night at 9 p.m., uh, we're on there talking about things like this. And I want to thank Neil for coming back in today and helping me update people on this author expo that's going to happen every month. So every month from 10 to 2 at the Thinstead Center in Grand Coteau, the first Saturday, there will be something happening there. If something else gets added to that, we will be making sure that you get your information. And we thank you for tuning in today. Until then, be blessed. And thank you, Lee. Thank you very much, Neil, for coming on. Thank you. I almost called you a different name, didn't I? Yeah.